Hello everybody and welcome to Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff. I wanted to do a quick tutorial today uh, about wrapped jobs, wrapped job setups, and if people have an indexer or recoil or lathe on their CNC machine, how they can utilize that to create round spindles and things of that nature. And so originally this came to me via a viewer that had done some modeling, just some terrific models in Aspire for table legs and such. And if you can see here, when we were, and I, I did a couple test runs on my machine too, and for whatever reason, when we would get to this spot here on the roughing tool path, it seemed to dig in right here and leave a ridge. And so you can see how the rest of it is machined really nicely, and then you've got this ridge or this, I don't know, groove that the roughing tool path would make. And it was just really, really, really frustrating. And so a couple things that I want to go over real quick is when you when you initially set up a job, a wrap job setup, and you go wrapping and wrap job setup, and you put in your diameter here of 4.75, and I'm going to use inches, I'm going to use lower left, I'm going to wrap my X values around my Y axis, and I'm going to make my Z0, which essentially in Aspire is the bottom of material, but for the lathe, it's the center of the, uh, the stock, and I'm going to do a simple cylindrical wrap just so I can get a setup here and show you, and click OK. And when you do that, you're working here in, in the flat, but the wrap job setup allows you to now wrap the whatever model you have going from left to right, wrap it around the y-axis. And so again, if you would imagine this is a piece of paper, there's a stick going through the middle of it, and you wrap that paper around that stick, that's essentially what we're doing here. And so if you come down here to the bottom, to the width here, you'll see that the width in X says 14.9226 inches. And how they arrive that is the circumference of a circle, which would be our width here, right? When we wrap that around, that then becomes our circumference. And when we take our circumference and we divide it by pi, we should get our cylinder diameter. And so, sure enough, if I pull up my calculator here and I take the 14.9226, I divide that by pi, which is 3.14, I get 4.75 diameter, right? And so that's all set up for you already here. You've got your 14.9226, which is essentially, again, your circumference. And then you've got your material thickness is going to be half of the diameter because we went to the middle of the material and half of 4.75 is 2.375 and the bottom of the material because we're working in the flat so to speak is essentially the center of the cylinder very confusing I know Hopefully I explain that properly. And so again, the gentleman sent me the project file, and this is it here. It's a really neat little table leg or chair leg. And I just took this model, put it on my machine, ran it, and I ended up getting the same result that he did here. But more importantly, when I looked at the model here and I came up here to Toolpath's Toolpath drawing wrap X values around the Y axis, when we looked at the model here, you can see if you zoom in, it's like a gap or an overlap or something there. See that space? Now that looks like there's a hole in it, like the two pieces don't come together properly. And I still, to this day, haven't been able to figure out why that's doing that. When we were looking at this, everything was lining up correctly. I had my width at 14.9226 my thickness was right um, 14.9226 down here in the lower left everything looked great and we continued to get that ridge or that cutout that that was wrong and so I just experimented with a couple of things now again I'm no expert all I can do is is tell you what I did that got it to machine properly I could never get this little imperfection in the drawing to go away 
but as you'll see in the machining footage at the end of the video I was able to machine this so that it came out correctly on the recoil but what I did was is I came here to the material and the model and then I just came over here to set selected object size and I noticed that the width was 15.1049 and I had the Z or the anchor point in the in the center here and so I moved the anchor point down here to the bottom I unlinked X and Y and I unlinked auto scale Z and I set this to 14.9226 and then we'll come over here and we'll center that model in the material then the second thing that I did is go to the modeling tab and I came up here to create vector boundary from selected components so I clicked on that and it put a bounding box around the model and then I came to this bounding box that should be 14.9226 wide and so I came over here to the box and I saw that it was 14.7648 so I made it 14.9226 and again for the folks at Vectric maybe you can help us out and make some commentary as why these dimensions aren't lining up as they should click apply and close and then I centered that in the material and then for machining what I did was I came over here to the roughing pass and th this is telling me that we've got to unwrap it before we can do a tool path and originally we had this set with uh, to machine to the model boundary but I went ahead and went to the selected vectors here no boundary offset a machining allowance of I did a sixteenth of an inch to leave a sixteenth of an inch there for my finishing pass I 3d rastered along Y because my recoil runs in my Y axis and calculate and here's our roughing tool path here and if I reset the preview and preview the visible tool path you can see there's the rough and if I wrap that tool paths tool path drawing wrap X values around the Y axis you will see when we machine this and let me put it in the orientation that you'll see it when you see it machining on the upcoming in the video that's what it's gonna look like when it's all done doing the roughing pass then what I did was came to the finish and originally we were using the model boundary and again I did the selected vector I did no boundary offset I did a raster and because my recoil runs in the Y direction I've got a raster 90 degrees and calculate and preview that tool path and so if I was using a flat piece of material that comes out great and I will tell you that utilizing this setup setup as you'll see when I show you the machining video it machined okay that way but still when I come to tool paths tool path drawing wrap X values around the Y axis I get this little overlap or gap right here in the drawing I have no idea why it's doing that what I can tell you is is that and if you look here I mean that looks short but when I machined it it came out right and so I guess the moral of the story for me anyway and again I'm no expert I'm just trying to show folks what works for me my machine as it relates to Vectrek this is really bugging me again I hope somebody can help us out with that but I just found that when I am utilizing the rotary I make sure that my material stock whether it's 4.75 or six inches or whatever I make sure that that's correct that their circumference is correct that the material width is correct the thickness is correct and that I have some vectors that I can machine to that line up with the circumference or the diameter of the material now having said all of that I look at the 3d view and I get that and I'm still frustrated by that hopefully I can get that figured out but for right now it's it's still kind of a mystery that should line up perfectly we've got all of our widths and circumferences and diameters and everything set properly 
Um, maybe the model is too complex. I mean, it's a really cool model. When you see it machined, it it's going to make a really, really neat table leg. I just, I don't know why it's doing that. So anyway, let's hop over to the machine. I'll show you the machining process. I hope some of this has helped. I know I went through it a little bit fast, but if you have any questions, let me know. Let's hop over to the machine and have a look. Okay, so this first roughing pass that I'm doing here is I just want to make sure that it's going to do the roughing pass correctly, make it all the way around the stock, not have any overlap, and just be sure that all of my settings are correct. And I'm not going to ruin another big block of wood. So uh, let's have a look at this just to be sure that it's all okay, and then we'll get to the, the real roughing and finishing passes. And so with that out of the way, it is time now to hop into the real roughing and finishing passes. And so these next couple of clips will be the roughing pass. Does a pretty good job, did a little time lapse. So have a look at the roughing passes and then we'll have a look at the finish. These time-lapse clips are really neat. Uh, you can really see the roughing toolpath start to take effect here. This is really cool. And so with the roughing all done, all we have left to do is the finish pass. Next couple of clips for the finish pass, and then we'll have a look at the finish leg. I, I think it came out okay.
And here's the leg all done. It, it came out really good. I used a pretty aggressive step over, as I said. Um, and so you do see the, the little lines, right? There's a little sanding to be done. These are two by fours glued together. Uh, I'm going to try it on some walnut, see how that looks. But this is a great model. A um, lot of fun to do. A little aggravating at first, but I think we got through it. So um, there's a spiral leg for a table or, you know, maybe even a chair. Hope this helps. Really appreciate everybody watching. This is Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff.